All right, everyone, I think we're ready to go ahead and start the demo. So let's go ahead and just uh, get right into it. We'll just run the demo. We have the usual Sierra logo. And so this is the demo of Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacists. Let's go ahead and, just as we did last time, let's start off by watching the uh, the ballad to accompany the, uh, the game. And no, once again, I'm not going to sing it, but you folks are welcome to do so. Yes, indeed. Let's play, folks. Let's play the demo of Freddy Farkas. Oh, really? The logo again? Alright. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. Play a minigame. And we start off in the pharmacy. It was a fine spring day in 1888, as I recall. Course gold weren't what it used to be, what with the gold running out and the drought and the dust storms and the plagues, then that freaked tsunami, then the Democrats coming into office and all, but it were still a nice place to live. Up until that day, anyway. Freddy Farkas was working in the pharmacy as usual, putting the final touches on his display of Old Snuffy's Limp Root Hair Oil Cream, a display that was getting to be the talk of the town. Suddenly, his faithful Indian sidekick, Srini, ran into the pharmacy. He was all a flutter, and rarer than a cowboy caught with his hand in the cassava patch. Oh, Freddy, a terrible thing most tragic is happening. The bank has been up and rubberied, and the thief has been hidden up in the old abandoned gold mine. Cornered in there he is, yes, but the posse took off at five o'clock, and unless from you immediate action is forthcoming, the thief will be escaped, yes indeed. Dag nabbit! The old abandoned mine company should have boarded that place up ages ago. Very well, Srinny, let's get cracking. You go back and make sure he doesn't leave, and I'll be there as quick as I can. What were you going to do, Freddy? Shoot the rascal up on the back? Give him a knife to the abdomen? Whop him over the head employing a bottle of Geritrol? Trademark. All good ideas, Srinny, but not my style. Nope, I'm gonna seal up that mine permanently and trap that varmint for good. 
And thus begins the demo. So we're here in the pharmacy. You might notice the pharmacy music is slightly different. They muted the, um, the sort of main part of the melody a little bit. The main line of the melody was a little bit more shrill, in my opinion, in the, uh, or at least high-pitched in the final release of the game, but here it's it's a little bit lower. I actually kind of like this version a little bit better because it's a little bit more muted. Let's see, let's go ahead and check the uh, sliders here. Uh, let's set the detail to maximum and the speed to maximum and the text down so the text stays on the screen for longer. Volumes, I think, already at maximum, yeah. All right, let's see. I'm just curious, what does this say? Knowing that you would never have pushed this button unless you wanted to know more about Freddy Farkas, we've decided not to tell you anything. Buy the game if you want to know more. Just Josh and yeah. Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist is yeah okay. This is so this is basically an advertising spiel. Uh, and I don't think there's such a thing as Farkas card, but anyway. Uh, in Europe, call that. I think that's actually a UK number. They don't mention that's a. a number in the UK, I think you'd have to dial 44, like the country code 44 if you're calling from outside of the UK, wouldn't you? But anyway, and here are some credits. Yeah, Josh Mandel and Al Lowe, programmed by, by these folks, art by these folks, and yeah, etc. Quality checked by Mike Bikinki. And more credits. And meanwhile, back at the demo. Alright, let's go ahead and play the demo. So, um... Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, take a look around. So, I have to say this part of the game especially, this part of the demo, is a little bit cheap. It involves some pixel hunting. Now, you might notice this thing over here. This kind of stands out, this white thing. Uh, it's a prescription sitting on the counter. A prescription in Dr. Lesby's typical unreadable writing. You remember filling it earlier this week, but dang if you can remember who, who, what it was for or who brought it in. Let's go ahead and take the... Uh, yeah, you pick up the small sheet of paper. Uh, but there are a couple of pixel hunting puzzles here which really are not very apparent in my opinion. There are two things here, uh, two other things in the pharmacy that you have to pick up besides that. One of them is this white thing here on the left table. That is an empty vial marked sulfur. Let's go ahead and pick that up. You take the vial that usually con uh, contains sulfur, a popular anti-flatulent, at the moment you're sold out. Is sulfur really a popular anti-flatulent? Like, can you really take sulfur to prevent outgassing? Somehow I somehow I doubt the validity, the scientific validity of this claim, but anyway. The other thing that you need is down here, this little blue rectangle that's at the bottom of this right-hand table there. That is another bottle. This one's labeled Saltpeter. I actually don't know... Is that pronounced Saltpeter? Or is it Saltpeter or something? Or I don't... I don't know where the emphasis is, but anyway. This is also a, an empty bottle. Uh, it's time to order more from the supplier, old Salty Peter. Trouble being, he don't he don't usually come around for another couple of weeks. But let's go ahead and take the bottle anyway. You grab the bottle, we usually keep Salt Peter. Unfortunately, it's empty. So, we now have these three things. An empty vial, marked sulfur. An empty bottle, for Salt Peter. And a prescription. But, uh... As usual, it's unreadable because it's written by Doc. So that's all we can get from here. And just to sort of introduce the demo a little bit, the demo is kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of nice that they did release a demo that shows off some parts of the game, but I don't like the way they really went out of their way at every opportunity to uh, to drive home that the demo is a stripped-down version of the full game and you can't go most places. Like, if you try to even go behind the counter here, Freddy walks into the back... And then it's, he comes back and it says, in the real game, you could go back there to your office. But since you haven't laid out the long green, we're not going to let you. And pretty much anywhere you try to go, it'll say that. I mean, there are a few screens, obviously, in the game. It's not just all in the pharmacy. But anyway, um, if we walk over here, for example, the only place we can go to is here in the, um, in the swamp. So that is the mine. That's the old abandoned gold mine where the Desperado's hiding out. It's a dangerous place with the rotting timbers, cracked rock, and haphazard tunneling. You'd better find some way to seal it up for good. A bit of homemade black powder would probably do the trick. Those of you who know the contents of gunpowder probably already guessed that we're going to make some gunpowder because sulfur and saltpeter are two of the three main ingredients for black powder or gunpowder. The third, of course, is charcoal, and those of you who've seen me go through the full game might remember that you get charcoal from the blacksmith's fire pit, so we already know where to get the ingredients, so we're, we're already off to a pretty good start. 
Um, one other thing that we do need to do, see this bucket up here? This was not in the full game, but here in the demo there is this uh, large bucket, big enough for one scrawny pharmacist. And we try to use it, Freddy uses it as a sort of a, uh, not exactly a pulley, but I guess you could say it's a pulley, to get across the, uh, the swamp. And the only reason we really need to get here right now is to pick up this thing, see this white line there? It is a length of unburned fuse. How convenient. Let's pick up the length of unburned fuse. So now we have, yeah, we have a spare fuse in our inventory. And we can go back the same way, which seems like it defies physics because uh, the rope is kind of going uphill towards the left. So you might wonder, how does Freddy actually make it go uphill? If you slow down the game a little bit, you'll see he actually... It's kind of hard to tell because I've made the game so fast, but if we slow it down, you can see Freddy is actually pulling with his arms. He's actually, he is sitting in the bucket, but he's using his hands to pull himself along. Well, now it's easy because he's going downhill, but uh, going uphill, he does the same thing. So, uh, so yeah, he's not just letting gravity pull him. He is actually pulling himself along that rope. So anyway, I'll go and speed up the game so we don't have to wait five centuries again for him to go across the swamp in the bucket. But anyway... So that's that. That's all we need here from now, for now. And uh, I think if we actually try to go into PP's playhouse, yeah, you rattle the doors a bit, but they seem locked for good. Maybe you can sneak in during the real game. It's kind of false advertising because you can't. You can't. Oh, what's this? I have to get way up close to grab that. Well, come on. All right, well, we can get that again. It's a recurring thing, so we can get that again later. But anyway, this is a bit of false advertising because you can't actually... Let's go ahead and grab this while we're here. Oh, come on. The game thinks I clicked on myself. You, you can't... Ah! There we go. You cruelly snatched the tin can from the sheriff's prisoner. Maybe now he'll cut out that racket. So what that was, that was a prisoner here in the sheriff's cell who was so bored that I guess he had nothing better to do than take a tin can and rattle it across the bars of his cell just to kind of amuse himself. So we uh, just stole his tin can to... Uh, prevent that terrible event from happening. Can we talk to the prisoner inside there? It ain't talking. All right, no. I don't think we can communicate with him. But anyway, uh, so like I was saying, yeah, you, can, you can't get into PP's Playhouse even in the full game, so I think that's a bit unfair that they suggest that you might be able to. Of course, you can get into the sheriff's office in the full game, but here it just says, if you'd sprung for the whole shebang instead of just this little here demo, this here little demo, you'd be able to enter through this very door and interact with Sheriff Chickam P. Shift. For now, tough beans. Speaking of beans, is this a bean can? Oh, it just says a tin can. Tin can yanked from the twitching, flea-ridden hand of the sheriff's guest. So that's it. That's all we can do here. And if we come over here, we s completely skip over the screen with, uh, with the barber shop and the general store, and just come here. And I don't think we can go into Mom's Cafe either. Nope, that's odd. Mom's door is locked. Something's terribly wrong. Trouble is, they don't let you into these places until you buy the whole game. In other words, buy this game or mom gets hers. So, yeah. We can get into the saloon, however. So let's go inside. And of course, in the full game, you can hear the music from outside the saloon, but in this demo, you can you only hear the music once you step inside. And look, there's nobody playing the piano. It's an honky-tonk piano, but the pianist gets Sundays and demos off. We also can't go through this door back here. We locked it before you started playing. See, in the demo version, there's nothing but limbo out there. In the real game, it'd take you to a very important screen. There's also a bit of pixel hunting here, but it's it's relatively obvious. You see this red thing here at the end of the bar? I guess it's fairly apparent, so... It's a red box of golden ball lucifers. What you call your matches these days. Let's go ahead and take it. You pick up and pocket the box of golden ball saloon matches. Now you're the envy of all your friends. Yep. Matches, the second most from the saloon, the second most popular night spot in Course Gold. The most popular, of course, being the brothel, and there's Sadie Ovalie standing right there. We'll talk to her in just a sec, but let's talk to Sam first. Set me up a cold, frosty one, Sam. Sure thing, Freddy. One root beer coming up. Sam gives you a root beer. Hey, that's cool. You have a root beer. It's a full root beer bottle, tinted dark to keep sunlight from deteriorating the delicate flavor of the thick, murky rot gut brew. You see, today's root beer is nothing like the root beer brewed way back when. I guess it contains actual alcohol or something? I don't know. Let's talk to Sam some more. How about a cup of joe, Sam? One international deluxe coffee coming right up. Sam hands you a mug of java. Wow, and we didn't even have to pay for any of this. I mean, we got free coffee and free root beer, and we don't have to pay for it. 
mug of hazelnut maca java strong enough to sober up even the most grizzled drunkard. Trouble is, what grizzled drunkard wants to be seen sipping java? That's actually a hint. Uh, we're actually supposed to use this to sober up a drunkard, which I don't think is quite realistic, because in real life, I don't think coffee makes people sober suddenly. I don't think it quite works that way. But, uh... Oh, well, anyway. By the way, we're getting a lot of inventory items, but unlike the full game, clicking these things on each other doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't get you any kind of special messages. You usually just get this message. Oh, there's a fine bit of brain work, kid, but that thing don't work with that other thing. So, remember I talked about how in the full game, they really went out of their way and took the time to write a special message for every for almost every item-on-item -item interaction. Here in the demo, you don't get that, but anyway. Let's talk to Sam some more now that we've got free coffee and root beer from him. So, Sam, what's shaking? Not much, Freddy. Heard about that fellow wh wh what robbed Bob's bank a while back? Uh, yep. Bad thing. Uh, yep. Here he's hiding out in the old abandoned mine. Uh, yep. Now, I was thinking that a fellow could pretty much seal off that mine if a fellow was to manufacture some sort of homemade bomb. Uh, yeah? Of course, he needs some sort of explosive powder. Maybe just mix up some saltpeter and some sulfur, a bit of charcoal, put it all in a metal can and attach a fuse. Know what I mean? Uh, yep. But that'd be wrong, wouldn't it? Uh, maybe. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, thank you, Sam, for pretty much giving away the entire detailed walkthrough to the entire demo. And here, of course, is Doc, drinking as usual. It's old Doc shall be stewed to the gills as usual. As Doc's fun explaining it, hey, I gotta keep up with all... Hey, I gotta keep up with all of the latest improvements in anesthesia. And here is Doc's whiskey glass, uh... Doing his usual vodka and non-dairy creamer, called a White Castle. But unlike in the full game, we can't take his whiskey glass. Other frontier pharmacists have been shot for less than touching someone else's drink. That might be the case, but in the full game, Doc doesn't seem to mind when we take his glass. Anyway, let's talk to Doc. No, I'm not talking to myself, I'm talking to the doctor. Dr. Gillespie, just the man I'm looking for. What, what was that? I swear it's an established medical procedure. I was not negligent. <laughs> no, no, you have me confused with someone else. I was simply looking for some assistance in my efforts to confound the forces of evil. Well, I'd love to help Mr. Farkas, but I'm a little blotto at the moment. <laughs> I'll be happy to help you, but perhaps some other time. And with that, the doctor returns to his pet project, seeing how many shots of booze it takes to get to the center of a liver condition. Well. Let's see. Uh, I wonder, can we get him to read this prescription? Probably not. Come on, there we go. Whose handwriting is that? I can hardly read it. Alright, let's talk to Sadie. That'd be Madame Overy, the lady of the house across the street. Say, Madame Overy. Now, Freddy Farkas, and watch where you move. I'm looking for something. Lose a contact? Worse! I've lost my imported Italian mole from Fredericks of Bakersfield. All my sex appeal, all my delicate high-class looks, lost. If you see it, you will return it to me, won't you, sweetie? Pardon me for commenting, ma'am, but isn't that just a little teensy thing? Couldn't you just use, like, a speck of mud or something? I refuse to even dignify that question with an answer. Oh, go ahead. Dignify it. Alright, so Sadie wants her mole. Well, where on earth could we find a mole? I mean, that's got to be pretty hard to find. It's just a just a mole sitting around somewhere. Boy, that would be, uh... That's going to be tricky. Yeah, I didn't want to show off the demo until I was done with the full game. I thought about showing the demo before I finished the, the game, but uh, I don't think the, the demo actually makes a good introduction to the game because it's it's not really a huge spoiler, but it, there's a little bit of a spoiler stuff going on because, like, for example, you meet Srini at the beginning, uh, whereas, you know, in the real game, you meet Srini about halfway through the game, and then uh, and then you meet Madame also here, whereas in the, in the real game, you meet Madame also halfway through the game at the end of Act 2. So... Uh, I guess it's not really a spoiler, just kind of introducing characters that you'll meet in the game, but I, I would rather have done this as I'm doing after finishing the full game. So, anyhow, let's see what's over here. Oh, okay, here is the blacksmith shop in the bank. 
Uh, but we can't go anywhere. If we try to walk back here, Freddy stops and comes back, and it says there's a lot more to do and see over in that direction, but only if you have the real version of the game, not this little bogus one. Down here, same thing. Yep, in fact, it's, it's exactly the same message. Probably if I walk over here, I'll get the same, right? Yes, I will. So that's it. We've already seen the full boundaries of the demo. Can't go into the bank, either. The bank is closed for demo day by the real game and we'll let you in if we feel like it. Oh, what an honor to be allowed into the into the bank to talk to the banker. All right, so let's talk to uh, Smithy, the blacksmith, and see what he has to say for the demo. Hey, Smithy. Focus! Ain't seen your scrawny hide lately. Yep, well, I'm just a mite concerned about that bank robber hold up the old abandoned gold mine. Would you be amenable to helping me bring that thieving rapscally into justice? Sorry, Farkas, but I'm a steel-driving man, not a crook-catching man. Then I'm gonna pay me a visit to Madame. Fifth time this week, too. Well, thanks anyway, Smithy. Big help you are. Hey, we all got our jobs to do, Farkas. Don't you pull none of your fancy East Coast guilt trips on me. I ain't falling for it. All right. And what happens if we try to touch Smithy? Quit touching me, Farkas. We're manly men around here. Yeah, this is a pretty tough part of the of the demo because you have to click in a specific spot. If you, there we go. You definitely pluck Madame's fancy schmancy imported mole off of Smithy's puss. Hey, how'd that get there? Thanks, Farkas. I didn't want no sissified mole cluttering up my rugged frontier features. I don't know. Was it maybe visible in his portrait before when we were talking to him? I don't think so. But maybe I just didn't notice. I don't know. Anyway, if you go into inventory. There it is. Now we have just this... It's its one pixel. One black pixel. That's it. It's a fancy imported Italian mole. So, let's go ahead and give the mole to Madame Sadie Overy now that we have it. I also think in the demo there's always just this one song playing. It's not like there are various different songs that play. Did they write different responses, at least for trying to use inventory items on people? Let me try giving the mole to Doc. Yeah, What do you do with the rest of Madame Overy? Oh, she's over there. Never mind. Hmm. I guess they did give at least different responses for the different people in the game if you try to use an intro items on them. Can you use the mole on myself? No. Let's try if we give it... What, what if we try giving it to Sam? Oh, a little round speck of fuzz. How cute. Have you thought about starting a collection? Alright, alright. Let's go ahead and give it to Madame. Here, darling hunk of pharmacist, you found my mole. I could just kiss you to death. Well now, ma'am, I was just doing my duty. Well, this little old mole means more to me than a peck of cow hands on payday. And anything you want, Frederick, you name it, it's yourn. Now that you mention it, madame, there is one little thing I could use. Oh yeah? Anything you want, just name it. Well, if I could just have a bit of that salt, Peter, back I prescribed you for a while back. I prescribed for you a while back, I'd be much obliged. Well, I was saving it for the blacksmith. He does like to roughhouse, you know. But I owe you one, Frederick Farkas. Do you have an appropriate, do you have something appropriate to put it in? Let me see. Oh yes, we have this uh, nice bottle, this pretty blue bottle, which I think is explicitly for the purpose of containing saltpeter. Here you go, madame. If you could fill this up with saltpeter, I'd be much obliged. It's all yours, Frederick. Madame Overy fills your saltpeter jar with saltpeter and hands it back to you. Okay, so we have we have some saltpeter graciously, graciously provided by the ever thankful and remollified Madame Overy. So we have one of our three ingredients for the uh, for the black powder. Uh, we still need the charcoal, but uh, I think actually I think once we get the mole off Smithy, I think we come back out here. Yeah, he's gone, so we can actually get the charcoal. Smithy seems to have let the fire die out. He must have gone back to fetch another mole. When one fire dies, another flares. You poke around in the embers of Smithy's fire pit, and you find some nice crumbly charcoal. So there we go. We've got charcoal. Uh, nice lumps of fresh from the forge charcoal, the professional blacksmith's choice. Okay, so we have charcoal, we have saltpeter, now we just need sulfur. Well, this might be a little bit... Uh, yeah. I don't know if this is surprising necessarily, but uh, let's see. Let's talk to the doctor. What happens if we give the, uh, the this vial of sulfur to the to the doctor? 
suck. Would you happen to have any non-metallic pale yellow element in a crystalline orth orthorhombic native state? My sulfur vial is empty. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe you should buy me another little drink first. <laughs> Alright. Doc wants us to buy him a drink. Well, as the game mentioned, if you give somebody, uh... At least in this demo, if you give somebody some coffee, it'll sober them up. Not quite sure how that works, but allegedly it works like that. So let's see if we give some Doc... If we give Doc some coffee. Boy, I really can't talk, I'm sorry. Never touch the stuff. It's poison. Alright. Well, how can we get Doc to drink the coffee? Well, it's very simple. Let's pour the coffee into, uh... we drink out of a can? No. Can we pour the coffee into this beer bottle to make it look like he'll be drinking beer? No? Hmm. I don't even get a message. Oh, there we go. Okay, that there's a fine bit of brain work. What we have to do, and it's strange that the game doesn't tell us, but what you have to do is drink the beer yourself. So let's go ahead and drink it. Though you haven't had a drink in decades, you tilt your head back and gulp down the frosty brew with all the practice savoir faire of a real professional drunkard. There we go. And now we have an empty bottle. One empty bottle of old Fresno extra syrupy Bach root beer. And now we can put the coffee in. You carefully siphon the coffee into the root beer bottle. How brilliant! A drunk person might imbibe this entire bottle before realizing that it isn't root beer. How do you siphon? Uh, I don't think they're quite sure what siphoning means, because I don't think that he siphoned it, I think he just poured it. Maybe funneled it? Except I don't think he had a funnel either, but anyway. Uh, and for some reason we lose the coffee mug, but that's okay, we don't need it. Let's go ahead and give this to Doc now. Thinking you're giving him a complimentary beverage, the Doc quaffs your thinly disguised bottle of Java. That ought to sober him up. Too bad you didn't think of this last week before the good doctor operated on your old friend, Phil Graves. Poor dear departed Phil. Alright, now let's talk to the doctor and see what's up. Doc! Frederick Farkas! I know you! Yes, you do. And it's nice to see you recognize me for once. I need something from you. Glad to help you out if I can, Frederick. What do you need from me? Boy, the doc sure speaks differently when he drinks some coffee. That coffee really sobered him right up. He's he's like a completely different person now. Let's see, can he uh can he make anything out of this prescription now that he's sober? Ah, oh, that was a prescription for salt, Peter. I gave it to Madame Overy a few days back in order to cool the ardor of that overeager blacksmith. I hope for her sake that it was efficacious. Wow. Seeing the doctor talk this way is like it's, it's surreal. It's like a whole other world now. Alright, now, Doc, can you give us some sulfur? Would you fill this up for me? Certainly. I just happen to carry some sulfur with me as a handy fungicide. Here, take some. The doctor fills your vial with sulfur and hands it back to you. Thanks, Doc. Oh, they even made a nice little animation. His arm moved in a little animation as he gave us something. Alright. Can you play the piano? Nope. Only the piano player can play this piano. Except he's not there playing it, so... Is it one of those self-playing pianos? One of those pianos that can play itself with a piano roll, I guess? Alright. We're done there, so let's go ahead and go outside. I think that we have everything we need now. Um, so we have... Yeah, we have sulfur, charcoal, and saltpeter. We have a can to store it all in, and then we have a fuse to light it with, and, and some matches to light the fuse with. So we're pretty much done. Um... Lighting up uh, a bomb could be dangerous, but here, as you can see in the demo, there's no option to save or restore the game. So, anyway. We still have zero points. You can see the maximum score is 50, but we still have zero points, even though we've been doing all this stuff. So this game's pretty uh, pretty tough when it comes to points. So, anyway, we can't save our game, so let's, let's just be bold and go for it. Let's just pour everything into the can. So let's pour some sulfur into the can. Yep, put the sulfur into the can. Let's put the saltpeter into the can. Yep. And let's put the charcoal in the can. There we go, you crumble the charcoal in the can. And of course, now we need the fuse. Attach the fuse to the can. And there we go. We have an unlit bomb. Well, it's a homemade bomb, just like Ma used to make, if your Ma was Ma Barker. I don't know who Ma Barker is, but that's okay, I can imagine. So, let's go ahead and light it up. Oh dear. You light the fuse, this is getting exciting. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done this here. You know what, I don't think that it blows up until you actually go to the mine and use it, though, because uh, you better do something with that bomb before it explodes. I think this is another one of those adventure game contrivances, because, uh, yeah, I think 
the game won't actually let you die. Or maybe it will. Actually, it probably will. If you walk into the swamp, it probably will let you die. So let's go ahead and quickly use this on the mine. There we go. Yep, that's how Freddy saved the day. He dropped that home-built bomb right down into the shaft, sealing up the entrance to that mine for good. The bandito, along with his untold tens of dollars in loot, was doomed to rot forever in the dank recesses and endless tunnels of the old mine. Until he found the exit. Oh, did I forget to tell you about the exit? Yeah, Freddy done sealed up the entrance real good, but he forgot to seal up the exit. Had to make sure there's adequate airflow, you know, to keep the miners comfy in the summer. Oh well, you still won the demo with, uh, let's say 49 out of 50 points. <laughs> anyway, thanks for living out the demonstration version of the legend of my old pal, Freddy Farkas. Be sure to watch the ballad now if you haven't already. And keep the sores off in your saddle and never count your money at the table. And stuff like that there. Hmm. What happened to the game? Suddenly the game got all choppy for some reason. Hmm. Let's get out of here. I think my, uh... I think my computer might have, uh... I think my computer might be overheating again. I hate when that happens. Boy, for some reason the for some reason the demo is straining my computer. Maybe it's just because it's hot here today. I don't know. Anyway, that was the demo. Uh, and you saw at the end, uh, uh, Whitlin Willie mentioned we got uh, 49 out of 50 points. So you might be wondering, people who are concerned with getting uh, a lot of points in games like this, you might wonder... What happened to the missing points? Uh, why uh, why did we, or missing point rather, why did we only get 49 out of 50 points? Well, there is no explanation for that in the game itself, but because this is a DOS program, a good old DOS game, if you look around in the game's files, you might notice there's a README file. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Hmm, let's see. I think this readme batch file won't work here in DOSBox because, yeah, because it uses the more command. And in DOSBox, regrettably, there is no more command. DOSBox is not really a full implementation of DOS because it's missing some key DOS commands like more. So what I would typically do is do something like this. I would type, type the file name and then a pipe and then more. But because there is no more command, the file just scrolls off the top of the screen. So what I did in anticipation of this, I actually copied a few list, uh, a few file viewers into this folder. You can see there are actually four of them. I'll go and start off with the most basic one. I'll just say list readme. And there you go. It's a very basic file viewer. It has no real interface other than just using the arrow keys. So anyway, thank you for playing the demo version of Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist. There are one or two things you should know before you play. Okay, back to more like five or six. Okay, nine. Um, got a problem, blame your hardware. Here are the hardware requirements, which apparently my computer doesn't match because the game suddenly started stuttering at the end there for some reason. Um, here's how to install. Here's how to run in Windows if you want to. They actually provide a PIF file for that. Remember PIF files? Program information files? Actually, I think, I think Windows might still use those today for things like compatibility mode and things like that. Anyway... Oh, and here's about the hotspots. So, funny thing, in the full game, each cursor has a hotspot. In the demo, uh, the main cursors, like walk, look, uh, use, and talk, those have hotspots. But here it says the inventory items don't have hotspots. Let it be a challenge to you, because they were too lazy to draw hotspots on the demo inventory items. The demo doesn't allow you to save or restore games. The real game does. The interactive version, the interactive portion of the demo is on a timer. If you do not give any commands to the demo for two minutes, it will autom automatically go to the ballad without saving your position or anything. Surprise! 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 Blau ballad! You can, however, pause the interactive portion simply by placing the cursor at the top of the screen so that the icon bar is activated. The right mouse button can be used to skip conversations or text. Yeah, just like in... Alright, here we go. Here's the key point. If you successfully complete the demo, Woodland Wooly, the narrator, gives you 49 out of 50 points. This is a joke. There are no points in the demo, and subsequently there is no way to get 50 out of 50. Why did we tell you this? Simple, because there is a saying, nobody reads the readme file. Well, obviously you are the one glorious exception to the rule, so we're rewarding you by saving you the trouble of hunting endlessly for the missing one point. All right, and here's uh, ad copy. It will be available in the spring of 1993. Enjoy, distribute it freely, knock yourself out, screw amusements. All right, that's it. And uh, 
since I'm showing off my file viewers, let's go ahead and walk through these. The other the other three files here are actually different versions of uh, of uh, well, if you press question mark, it shows you. Yeah, this is uh, the famous list program from Vernon D. Borg. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Borg, Borg, uh, who unfortunately passed away in December of 2009, but he was quite uh, quite well known for this program. Actually, this was one of those programs that was really back in the days of DOS. This program was probably one of the most famous or at least one of the most useful DOS programs. This is still one of my most favorite computer programs ever because it really enabled file viewing in DOS in a way that nothing else did. Um, this is version 5.69c and there's also, uh, let's see, I have another copy here which is a little older or uh, a little newer rather. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is version 6.4a. And notice also the address change. By this time, Vernon D. Borg had moved from Daly City to Petaluma, both in the San Francisco Bay Area, but Petaluma is, I think, a little bit more to the west, if I'm not mistaken. Daly City is just south of San Francisco, and I think Petaluma is a little closer to the coast. It's kind of uh, west or southwest of Daly City, but anyhow. And then finally, there's uh, the latest version that I have is this. This is version, uh, yeah, there we go, 9.0e. Uh, in 1993, this this version of List came out around the same time that the that the the game did that Freddie Farkas did. Well, all this stuff is like looking back in history, just looking through a sort of time warp at the way that people viewed files back in the days before. However, they view files now. I still view files this way. I don't really understand why people don't still use List because it's still very useful. This is still how I view a lot of files from the command line, but I don't know. People do other crazy stuff these days, so I have no idea what people do now. Anyway, I guess that's that. That was the demo, and with that, we come to the end of Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacist. So, uh, yeah, I think we are well and done here. As always, thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope that you've enjoyed our adventures through the Wild West, through a so somewhat fictionalized version of Coarse Gold, and uh, all the hijinks and excitement and adventures and thrills and heroics heroics that we uh that we experienced uh during this adventure so yeah we're done we are done so thank you again everyone and i will hopefully talk to you folks later uh as a side note of course people are going to start asking what i'm going to play next uh at the moment i don't know i don't have any specific plans to play any games in the near future uh so don't know. The short answer is I don't know what I'll do next, but uh, yeah, I'm open to suggestions, but I don't have any immediate plans to start on another Let's Play like this for a while, so uh, so yeah. Alright, thanks everyone. Ta-ta for now.